Over here is uh, some, you'll see some of our citrus back here. This one right here is a small Meyer lemon tree. These typically can get about mm, six to eight, 10 feet tall, but this one's a little smaller because it's in a small pot. <clears throat> it's about 15 years old. I think this spring I might put it in a new pot, pot it up, give it a little more room. Um, but you can see they don't really have to be that big to give you a lot of lemons. Uh, right now, late January is when you see a lot of these citrus um, fruiting. Uh, and my mother actually likes to make lemon cakes out of these. Uh, so next week, I think I'm going to do an actual a more detailed video about the citrus. And I'll put in a recipe for my mom's cakes uh, while I'll add it. I'll put it in the description. Meyer lemon. Um, this here is a banana tree. Right now, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's tiny compared to what it was uh, last year. It's been cut back severely because this tree actually, we couldn't get it out of here. We couldn't move it. It had grown all the way up into the, uh, into the supports of the greenhouse. Um, so they cut it back quite a bit. Here's a couple pieces. Looks like somebody took off of there and uh, planted up and we'll grow another. <clears throat> banana tree out of that. Banana trees are pretty interesting to see them uh, fruit. I'd never, until I came here, I'd never seen one like in real life, but uh, they get these huge clusters of bananas on them. And you gotta be careful because they weigh a ton. Like they're really, really heavy. So once you get this big clusters on, on, a, uh, on a tree like this, it's really important that you like tie it up with something or put a piece of uh, wood or something to prop it up. Because once you, it takes a really long time to form and to ripen. And once you get to that stage, it's, it's sort of depressing to come out and see your big chunk of bananas laying on the floor. Uh, we've been there, done that. Yeah, picky beer. So if you want to move on, here's another interesting plant. This is a, pla this is a passion flower. Not pretty, I'll try to hold it still. Very, very pretty flower. Another uh, Benjamin fig. Down here on the ground, these are just some random uh, succulents. I think I'm going to pot up and put into uh, like mixed containers, mixed succulent containers <clears throat> for this spring. Um, there's just a bunch of neat stuff in here. This one's really cool. Here's one of the chrysulas that's in bloom right now. You can see there's several different kinds of chrysalis in here, but this one's, I think, the only one that's blooming. And then we got some aloes. <clears throat> Here's some, uh, I have actually one of these in my office, one of these aloes over here. And it does very, very well. My office barely gets any natural daylight at all. But I have some uh, some pretty some pretty bright LED lights uh, fixtures in the ceiling, and I've had it in there for about a year and a half, and it just it does really really well. Uh, the trick with aloes and really any type of succulent is uh, just don't water it too much. They don't mind being watered uh, too little as much as uh, they mind being watered too much. <clears throat> That's the number one thing I tell people when it comes to them. Uh, behind me here. Here's a really, here's a plant with has a really uh, ancient history when it comes to humans. Uh, it's an avocado tree. These have been cultivated in Mexico for at least like five or 7,000 years. Um, but avocados really didn't become popular in the United States until about the 1990s. Um, in the wild, these trees can get about 70 feet tall. They like a lot of water. This particular one is, uh, is about three years old. Um, so it's probably gonna be another handful of years um, before it puts fruit on it, if it does, we'll see. I don't think they've ever grown one here before, so we'll find out. <laughs> Here's another tree that has an excellent, uh, or a really long history with humans in cultivation. It's, a, it's an olive tree. Um, if you've ever been in the Mediterranean, you'll see there's a lot of 
groves out there. Some of the trees out in the Mediterranean, some of these groves can be as old as 2,000 years, uh, some of the specimens. Uh, this particular olive tree is about 12 or 13 years old. It was given to the nursery. Somebody uh, sent it as a gift in the mail about, like I say, about 12, 13 years ago. And it just arrived as like a little bare root twig. I'm not sure what variety it is, um, but it doesn't, it doesn't get olives on it. Like it, it'll get olives on it and then they'll drop off, like only a few. Um, and I'm not really sure why that is. I've looked up, some things say pollination because we don't have a different cultivar here with it to, for it to cross pollinate with. Um, other things say watering. I've heard like it's being over watered during certain times of the year and it could be a, even a, um, like, a, like a heat or cool situation. But if you have any ideas on why it's not producing fruit, uh, definitely leave a comment because um, I'd really like to know. So we'll move on. Uh, over here, you'll see we have some Cymbidium orchids. That's a terrestrial orchid. These particular orchids, they like a lot of uh, sun compared to, compared to most other types. Um, they also like some cooler temperatures, but they, they bloom right in the dead of winter. <clears throat> We've got a, several different colors here in a collection. They make a really nice cut flower because the, the blooms last a very long time. Um, over here is some more. Here's probably a better example. Hey, piggy bear. <clears throat> you can see back in here, they're, they're just starting to bloom. Like I say, it's late January right now. And they will, they'll have these long, um, these long chains of blossoms and they'll just, they'll just go for, for a couple months out yet. Um, above the, the orchids, <clears throat> you can see there's, there's a, um, a regular lemon tree, like a sour lemon. I'm really not sure what the cultivar is. This one is about 30 years old. And you can see that's, that's got a lot of ripe fruit on it as well. Oh, I wanted to, uh, I wanted to cut one open, actually. I'm going to cut open one of these. I want to cut open one of the, uh, the Meyer lemons. I'll be right back. Let me just grab a Meyer lemon. Just to show you a little bit of a difference. The Meyer lemon is a little more orange. And the, uh, the regular lemon, you can see that's, this is, this is the lemon off of this tree. That's the Meyer lemon. I'm just going to cut into it. This one has a few seeds in it. T typically, the, uh, the Meyer lemons have less seeds in them than the regular lemon does. Um, okay, so I'm going to set this down. Give myself a little more room here so I don't have a cutting board. Lemons are great when you just pull them off the tree because I think they're just allowed to ripen for that much longer. So the difference between a lemon that you pull off a tree and one that you get at the store is just incredible. Very, very juicy. You can see the Meyer lemon has more of an orange flesh to it. Uh, and it is, if I had to describe it, it is almost like a lemon cross with, a, with an orange. In fact, I think that technically that's what it is. Um, but you can, you can just eat them. They're not going to, uh, this might be a little bit more tough to bear. I'm not going to do that one, but the Meyer lemons are just really nice to squeeze into water. Uh, and drink, you know, a little bit of lemon in your water and drink it that way. Uh, when you have lemon trees, you find out a lot of different uses for lemons. <clears throat> Moving on. This is a lime tree. And again, if you have cit citrus trees, you get to let them ripen. And a lime will actually turn yellow once it's fully ripe and it gets sweeter and, uh, when everything's still green, because you can, you know, obviously you can eat a lime when it's still green. 
they, actually, they can actually be really difficult to tell apart from the other citrus trees. At least for me, it's difficult to tell apart. The only way I can tell the difference is from the smell. But you can see that even the lime, even when it's yellow, it still has that little bit of a green color on the inside compared to the lemon. They are, uh, they are really nice and sweet and flavorful uh, when you let them turn yellow. <clears throat> Another thing, if you grow citrus trees, uh, even if you don't get fruit off of them, just to have the blossoms themselves is, uh, is really, really something. The smell is absolutely incredible. I'd never smelt uh, citrus blossoms until I came here. I'd never been to California or to Florida or anything, and uh, at least, and definitely while not the uh, when the when the citrus trees were blooming. Um, if I had to explain the smell, I would say that it's somewhere between like a gardenia and a honeysuckle. But they're very potent. It's an excellent smell. It's a strong. It's a strong smell. Um, I'll take sometimes. I'll take a little cluster of flowers like that. I'll put it in a little vase and I'll put it in my office and just a little cluster like that will, will uh, make my entire office smell like a, like a lemon grove. That's pretty neat. Down here, I'm not sure what kind of orange this is. Um, what I do know is it's really, really good for juice. It, they are super sweet. And again, if you leave them on the tree for a long time, they just get sweeter with age. Cut that one open. My aunt usually likes to come over and load up on these and make juice out of them. You can see the color, not too many seeds. I'm gonna put all these over here. I'm gonna come back and get them later. Okay. And then uh, the last thing I wanted to show you is these are these are bay leaves. This is a bay tree. Uh, so like if you're going to make soup or stew or something like that and you throw a bay leaf in, that's exactly what this is. And they've been cut back a lot. Like I say, before we bring them inside for the for the winter time, everything gets a nice haircut so it can get uh, jammed in here a lot tighter. Then I was showing you aloe earlier. <clears throat> this is the typical aloe vera that a lot of people have around here in their house, either in their bathroom windowsill or kitchen windowsill, things like that. Um, this is the one I guess you would grow to have it as a uh, like a medicinal <clears throat> a medicinal plant. Let me take this glove off. Just want to show you what you do with it. You can cut that off, then you just squeeze out. It's like a it's like a gel. And that is really good for if you have like a, like a burn, if you burn yourself in the kitchen or if you have sunburn or even a cut or a scrape. It's uh, very soothing and it's very good to heal stuff with. Health. I don't know what to do with my hands now. <laughs> I guess I'll just rub it in. Uh, so that's pretty much it. It's just a little tour of the greenhouse. You got to meet the, uh, got to meet the puppies. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, uh, if you saw something that you'd like to learn a little bit more about, send me a comment or send me an email and uh, maybe I'll do a video about it in the future. Uh, if you like the video, like, subscribe, share it with your friends, all that stuff. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you.